you want to get radio signals, you got to have an antenna. Now, when I was gathering parts to build this portable, one of them that I was not able to find was the loop antenna. It was something that they called a Matheson loop, which was a foldable loop antenna that, uh, well, for the most part, are probably in the hands of collectors, and if I was able to find one, it would cost me big boffo bucks. As it was, some of this stuff was already costing me big boffo bucks in the long run. I didn't want to spend any more than I really had to. A couple of issues after this portable, there was an article about how to make a tapped collapsible loop from a guy named E.R. Hahn. Now his main reason for building one was because he lived in uh, Chicago and he had two powerful stations next to him and they were splattering their signal all over the dial and it made it impossible to tune anything outside of them. So what he wound up doing was making a tap loop and he found out that eliminated all his trouble. Then he went one step farther, made it portable. The entire assembly collapses in on itself and he can then take it anywhere. Now to make this antenna, this is what you need. You need 8 inch thick sheet brass and then four strong half inch stock cross pieces preferably oak and that's exactly what I got. I got all of this off of eBay this was something I really wasn't going to be able to find in a store uh, especially the brass. If you try to look for sheet brass it's usually that flimsy stuff that you can make spring contacts or uh, decorative things. I needed something very thick. So we start with the uh, pieces. You have three cross pieces and then one which is called the standard. Standard meaning it's the whole thing that this loop stands on. It's the, bot it's the piece that goes straight down to the bottom onto some sort of base. The three cross pieces are roughly about 13 and a half inches long. And the first thing you do with it, you stand this thing up on end and you saw a slot into it roughly about six and a half inches inward. After you've done that, you flip it over to one side and you drill 17 holes from the bottom of the stick up to the end of where the uh, saw slot is done and you space those about um, 3 8 inches apart. At the opposite end of that stick is you drill a larger hole and that's going to go into this um, centerpiece clincher assembly which is made of brass like I mentioned. Now the standard is put together the same way as the cross pieces except this time you use a 16 inch piece of wood. On one end you uh, line up one and a quarter inches off of that end and you round it instead of it being square. That's what uh, is going to uh, be used to stick this uh, entire loop antenna into a base. From there the slot is cut but it's a little bit different. You use like a keyhole saw and you cut in at an angle and then work your way upward and inward and that makes the slot. Same thing, six and a half inches and then you also cut those uh, 17 holes just as before. And of course on the opposite end larger hole so it'll go into the clincher. Now the next thing is going to be the centerpiece, which holds all these sticks together. You take a piece of sheet brass and you cut it in this uh, pattern shown on the screen. I don't have the exact measurements with me because uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't know if anybody is going to be actually trying to do this, but if they do, I'll send you the article and you can get a rough idea of how it's put together. But it's basically a square and then from that square you take smaller squares off the ends and then you have these 
sort of a cross pattern with two flaps on each end. Each flap is about a half inch long, a uh, half inch wide, I should say, and the squares that you cut off are about an inch square. And also they have the holes that are going to allow you to uh, put a screw in and hold the sticks in place. Now, after you've got it cut this way, you then heat up the brass, soften it up a little bit, and then put it in a vise and turn up each one of those little flaps until they uh, stand straight up as you can see in this second diagram. Now you have the method with which to hold those sticks in place. You just simply put a stick into between each one of those flaps. Now you want to cut another piece of brass into an octagonal shape and this is going to be sort of a backing board with which those wood pieces are going to fall back upon. I slathered it with a bunch of solder and then with a uh, butane torch heated it up and also heated up the clincher, the centerpiece clincher, and put them two together, put those two together I should say, and uh, solder them both together. And uh, once that is done, you are all set to take uh, screws and bolts and put the center, the cross pieces and the standard together. And it'll form a nice large cross. Uh, I should also say before you do that, go ahead and stain and either polyurethane or uh, if you really want to go uh, old fashioned, lacquer or shellac the uh, wood pieces into a nice dark finish. That's usually what they did back in the 20s. The last piece that you need to get, or the last part you should get, is a spool of uh, wire. And I got a hundred feet of it. I uh, got it from China. And I gotta tell you, I paid dearly for it. It's uh, cloth covered, sort of like Litz wire. Um, paid about 50 bucks for the stuff. And at this point, you are ready to wind on the wire to the entire loop. And here's what you do. You get a bunch of small brass pins about 3 8 inch long. And you start from the inside part of the loop, which would be the closest to the centerpiece. You tap one of those in. You tie a knot into the wire and then you tuck the wire underneath into the slot that you had made right up against the pin that was just driven in. Then you go to the next cross piece, do the same thing. Tap in a pin, guide the wire into the slot around that pin, do that again and again and again, and eventually you just keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping until you pretty much get the normal shape of a loop antenna with all those wires. Now the one thing I did was I made sure that the uh, wire was fairly slack because at one point towards the end of your winding about four turns into the very end is going to be where a tap is and I wanted to make sure that I had enough slack so I could take the wire, cut it, and then I would be able to solder it to a lug where in turn I would then be able to take it and make that tap. The next step is you need to put in the solder lugs. Five in total. Two towards the loop, three towards the bottom. The first two comprise of the inner, most inner portion of the loop. You solder the uh, part that you had tied a knot onto and solder it onto that lug, tighten all the wire up. The next portion is going to be for that uh, that tap that I mentioned. You want to pull up all the slack, trim the wire, and then with the two pieces, wrap that together, solder it to that next solder lug. The remaining three are pretty straightforward. The next one is going to be the outermost portion of the loop, and then you've got the remaining two, along with the one that I just mentioned, the outer portion of the loop, 
those are going to be your connecting points where you put connecting wires and those in turn connect to the terminals on the radio. So those last three, one is the outer portion of the loop. The second one, you need to throw a flying wire off to the tap that you had just made earlier and solder a lug to it. The last one, throw another flying wire off to the inner portion lug and solder it to the last terminal that you've just put together. Then in turn you're able to put together the connecting wires. I didn't use cloth covered wire on this. I probably should have made it look a little more period correct, but I wanted flexible wire, something that was going to last something I didn't have to mess with time and time again. And most of the uh, cloth covered wire that I have is fairly stiff. I wanted something, like I said, flexible. So I just used vinyl alligator wire clips wire and uh, I even color coded them. Uh, I believe it was uh, red, green, and yellow. And like I said, not period correct, but it's flexible. I won't have to mess with it. And the nice thing about it is when you fold this loop together, you can wrap that connecting wire around and you won't have any stray wires going all over the place. The last thing I needed to do was to make a base. And as I mentioned, that last one and a quarter inch piece of wood, I sanded down to a nice, fairly small rod and I cemented a quarter inch foam plug onto it. This allows me to then on the radio install a quarter inch jack on top. I can then put the entire loop assembly into that jack and now I have a rotatable loop antenna. Some people have asked me why in the world didn't I just go ahead and use the connectors and solder it directly onto the uh, phone jack and the phone plug. I could have but that's not what the radio uh, originally was designed for and on top of that I have a radiola 26 that uses the same principle dirt and other uh, grime can get into there and make a whole hell of a lot of intermittence so I figured I'm not gonna mess with that the three wire principle that I used will work just fine I don't have to worry about dirt or anything the only thing I would have to worry about is the flexibility of the uh, connecting wire that eventually one makes a break somewhere in that wire and I don't see that happening anytime soon. Here's the final product. I have the connecting wires wrapped around it to hold everything together. Your antenna wire should be drooped or draped whichever way you want to look at it just like such. Now we're going to unfurl it. The first thing we need to do undo our connecting wires and you want to do this fairly carefully. Bring up the standard gently pull out. Now what you want to do as you're unfurling, you might get these little curly cues. You want to undo those before you completely unfurl it. So bring it down. side, do the other, there we go, and then the third side. Kind of fussy, but this is how they did it back then. No curly cues, 
And then, when you're done, the whole thing should pull out and bow just slightly backward, you can see. That's to hold it in place. Also to make sure that the screws are tight. And here it is. Looks like something you'd want to see in The Exorcist or something. The power of Christ compels you!